time, Donald Trump tripling down, getting voters all fired up about immigration. Thousands and thousands of supporters in Arizona. It was like a rock concert cheering on Donald Trump. Uh, say what you will about the messenger, but getting the big, big crowds. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says the message, uh, it's a message that's resonating. It, we know it's resonating. Governor, welcome to the show. But is it, is it a double-edged sword? You know, for every, every person that we see down there, we see maybe the unfavorables also moving up. Is it, is it worth it? Well, here's the deal. What Donald Trump is talking about is an issue that all candidates are talking about, and that's because it's a pressing issue in our country right now, and that is securing our border. Uh, I would say that the tenor uh, that Donald Trump has used is, is not the tenor that I would use. Uh, it is important, however, to emphasize uh, that the only reason why this is being talked about is because Washington, D.C. has completely failed America in doing its job to secure the border, which is why I, as governor of Texas, stepped up and did what the federal government has not done. We passed a bill that puts $800 million into securing our border. We have the toughest border security plan any state so has ever had in the history of America. How does $800 million look? It's not not a big wall, right? It's, you're not talking about building a wall. Uh, 800 million is a lot of money. How does it look in reality? Boots on the ground is the most important thing. High technology, where we will have cameras that will look at almost every one of the 1,200 mile border that we have with Mexico. We have airplanes in the air. I've been in these before where you can, you can see both at day and at night the traffic coming across the border. Boats on the water and high technology combined, this will allow us to do the most effective job of securing our border. What about the ability to respond? Because I already can see a bunch of illegals walking across and saying, Tied to the cameras. In other words, it's one thing to have right. a camera. It's another thing to be able to respond because already we we have plenty. Absolutely. Illegal strolling through. There's no, no protection. That's why we have the boots on the ground. We're, we're adding Texas Department of Public Safety officers who can make arrests. And that's what is needed. We need people down there making arrests. And so for the first time, we will have uh, the forces who can make the arrests who can secure the border. What do you think? Why doesn't this message resonate in Washington, D.C.? And why are we now up to over 200 sanctuary cities? So essentially, we're rolling out the red carpet. We are asking, we're begging people to break into our country. I think Washington, D.C. either A, doesn't care, or worse, is promoting this. Remember this, th a concept embedded in the United States Constitution is the federal government must protect our sovereignty. They've completely failed in protecting our sovereignty and securing our border, and that's why the states are stepping up and doing what the federal government has failed to do. A cynic would say that Democratic lawmakers in Washington, D.C., particularly the president, uh, sees these illegals as future voters. Uh, and, and, and that's why you don't do anything about it. They come, they assimilate, and sooner or later they get the opportunity to vote. You see it that way? Uh, I, I see it. Because they talked about taking the great state of Texas down eventually because of demographics. Don't forget last week California became more Hispanics than whites, uh, making the second state in the union. The next one will be Texas. Well, remember this, and that is the, the promise that we see come from the Texas economy. Uh, we, I've seen Hispanics turn into Republicans because they see Republican policies work. Second, uh, my wife is the first Latina first lady in the history of the state of Texas, and we have a great connection between the Republican Party and the Hispanic community, where I got about 45 percent of the Hispanic vote in this last election. And that's because of opportunity. It doesn't matter what race you are, what background you you come from everyone wants economic opportunity and that is what Texas provides how do you how do you how do you articulate that because I've had this conversation with very staunch conservatives and a lot of them have Hispanic vote the black vote sometimes uh, whatever vote it is and they say well we could never win a state like California or maybe Florida New York I think they're wrong how would you articulate that for them uh, I think that that everyone of any kind of background uh, wants to have a freedom liberty, which is what the United States of America stands for, at least Texas, the United States of America is getting away from the liberty that was guaranteed by the Constitution. The second thing is everyone wants the chance to be able to dream and achieve and work toward a goal. 
Texas offers that, whereas what Washington, D.C. offers uh, is more of a socialistic type system, a one size fit all mandate about the way your life is supposed yeah. to run. That's not in our DNA. I mean, you go all the way back and you go to some people who came to this country from Europe. They went back and said, distinct difference. Uh, <laughs> we've never seen a country like America where everybody, no matter what, where they're born in life, believe that they can go uh, higher in the rankings. Of course, the Europeans looked at us 200 years ago and even today as being arrogant for believing that. Let's talk about Hillary Clinton because she's been speaking today. Her economic policy sounds distinctly different than the things that you just laid out. She said, no, this is the way you do it. Infrastructure, tax relief for small businesses, better child care, making college more affordable, collective bargaining, and of course, more, most important, taxing those rich people because they're stealing and sucking up all the money and opportunities. It is going to be more of the Obama-style economic theory that's been disastrous for this country. Uh, Texas offers something completely different. If Washington, D.C. would follow what Texas has done, they would see the job growth that Texas has seen. What I just did as governor is, uh, as other states were increasing taxes, we lowered taxes in Texas. We, we cut taxes what by taxes? about $4 because you, billion. You don't, have, you don't have income tax already, right? Yeah, get, get this. We, we don't have any personal income tax. Right. We don't have any corporate income tax. We do have a business franchise tax that we just slashed by 25%, and we cut property taxes on top of that. And get this. Well, in addition to that, we did invest more in transportation infrastructure, in schools, while also coming in under budget. We did not spend all the money that came in, so we had a budget surplus. Now, critics, of course, say, come on. I mean, we started this whole uh, interview off with an alert out of Iran on oil. Oil's had an amazing run, over $100 a barrel. You guys have just been the beneficiaries of, uh, of, of, of a gigantic, massive economic windfall, and it's nothing else that you're doing special. What would you reply to a critic? To, to the contrary, despite the fact that oil is half the price today of where it was a year ago, uh, Texas, uh, this last month, still came in third in the nation with regard to new job growth, and there's a reason for it, and that's because... Our economy is di is diversified. Look, look at we have airlines, we have American Airlines and Southwest Airlines. Uh, we just uh, had a big Facebook uh, deal uh, that we cut. General Motors tomorrow is spending 1.4 billion dollars to expand at manufacturing in the state of Texas. We have the most diverse economy in the United States of America, and Charles, there is a reason for it, and that's because of the low cost of doing business, because of the high standards of the workforce. Businesses are flocking to the state of Texas. How do you feel? I mean, you do a lot of traveling. Uh, I, I know a lot of governors travel a lot, but I, I notice that you do a lot of traveling. How do you feel about the rest of the nation? Forgetting about Texas, the great state of Texas for a moment. Uh, a lot of people have given up uh, on the far left, far right. Uh, I just feel the sense that a lot of Americans have given up. How can, how can we get them to believe, even if they don't live in a state like Texas, that it's still possible? Well, the reason is because of competition. Competition leads to better products. And, and here's one thing that happened just over the past month, and, the, and that is uh, Jeff Emelt and GE announced to Connecticut when Connecticut announced they were raising taxes, uh, Emelt said they're going to have to reconsider whether or not they stay in Connecticut. I sent a letter the next day to Jeff Emelt saying, come to Texas. And that Connecticut is saying, well, we may have to rethink those tax increases. And so through the theory of competition, by, by Texas leading the way, by Texas attracting jobs from Connecticut, from Rhode Island, from New York, uh, it's going to force these states to build a better product and hence build a better United States of America. I hope you're right. I, I really do. It's, it's really uh, what you guys have done, what your predecessor has done is absolutely remarkable. Uh, I'm glad you made it in today. We really appreciate your time, Governor. Thank you. Governor Greg Abbott, thank you very much. All right, guys, listen, we're edging closer to...